hello guys welcome back to another youtube video welcome back to my channel my name is ada armstrong i am a youtuber based in abuja nigeria and if this is the very first time you're coming across my channel and my face please do not make it your last subscribe watch to the end of this video if you do end up enjoying this video give me a huge thumbs up turn on your post notification share my video let a friend of a friend know about ada armstrong it will mean so much to me if you are a returning subscriber welcome so today's video is um a bit personal but i decided to share because i believe this is something this is something that um happens so often in our society like it is something you see happen everywhere in schools in churches you see it happen in the workplace so i just believe that sharing my experience would somehow encourage strengthen and motivate yeah uplift someone else going through what i went through okay so yeah from the title of this video i want to be i'll be giving i'll be sharing my sexual harassment experience that i had in the university okay so yeah i can talk about this now because it's been like a couple of years like this happened like three four years back so i think i i feel comfortable to talk about it to share my experience just so someone else out there that is listening would just know that this is not this is something that is not just happening to you like you're not alone in this this has happened to a lot of other people men and women are like I'm sharing my experience from a woman's from a woman's perspective. Perspective. Oh my god. Perspective. <laughs> of course, men experience sexual harassment too. I'm not going to deny that. So yeah, without wasting much of your time, let's just get into my story. Okay? Yeah. So um this happened um in, during my third year in the university i'm not going to mention names i'm not going to mention the school i went to i'm not going to say my experience without mentioning names i won't mention the name names of anybody but i'll give like um the lecturer i'll be referring to let's call him mr x okay yeah so when i talk about my lecturer i would say mr x yeah and i won't mention the name of my school okay for obvious reasons so during my third year in the uni i we had this course that we usually write in third year like it was a calculation course and i know calculation is not like it's not like my strong suit but it is something i i don't i don't fail despite the fact that it is not my strong suit you won't actually see me failing a course that has to do with calculation b as it be i would not get an f i would get a d i would pass like i would escape it i would pass so um it was the very first time i was and this happened in my third year i don't know if i've mentioned that it happened in my third year so my first year second year i did not have any carryover like i didn't bag any carryover i was scaling you know i was thanking my lord jesus and making my way through school then it got to my third year um and then we started taking this particular course with this particular lecturer and before we start taking this course with him um i've heard stories of people saying that oh okay this mr x he likes thick girls that are fair he likes he likes light-skinned girls that are thick and i was like okay i'm not somebody growing up i'm not someone that a lecturer would notice or a teacher would notice in class my classmate or my classmates would definitely notice me but when it comes to lecturers i make sure that i have nothing you won't know me i don't have issues with you but i'm not like their lecturer or a teacher's favorite person okay so um going into the class i took that same energy i wasn't doing anything to stand out i wasn't doing anything to not stand out i was just a regular student in class you know and um the first day i, I can remember vividly the very first day he took note of me was i don't know if that maybe he actually took note of me prior to that day i don't know but i was just in class with my friend and we were sitting down and then i don't know he picked us out for something very silly something very random and then he told us to see him after class okay i was i was going to his office with my friend and i was like okay be as it be like i'm not the only person going there like 
we are both of us are going to his office and then we went to his office after the conversations blah 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 we shall me do our way and came out of the situation i my friend later told me that he tried to you know meet her to ask her for one or two but then she she lied gave excuses but she sat came out of the situation so um after our first semester taking that course the results came out and it wasn't you know when you write a course or you write and you take an exam and then you're like god please i know i'm going to fail but just help me but it wasn't something that i would say oh lord i'm going to no i was i was a bit certain of myself like i was a bit certain i was quite certain that even if i would fail this even if i wouldn't do well at this course it would be a c or a d even if i don't do well i was sure i wasn't going to get an f moreover we as a class we heard that um it was it was common knowledge that if you pay a certain amount to this to this man like you buy his textbooks and all that you would definitely not have a carryover so i paid i bought i paid the nine thousand euro or six thousand euro i don't know i can't remember but then we're supposed to pay a particular amount of money so i paid just like every everybody else so i was surprised on the results came out like i think on just in a random evening one monday tuesday evening or so and i told my, i don't stay in school so i told my friend please just help me check you know i was i was not expecting a carry over okay so i told my friend please help me check check my own when you go to check you just tell me let me know what i tell me what i got and then to my shock my friend called me and told me ah, ah, sandra ada armstrong as people know sandra you got you failed the course i was like failed the course it was my very first time i didn't know how to react but i knew that me i knew i can remember that if, when she told me that tears i just started there crying you guys i shared tears and that evening i took my bag i went to school like i took i entered school it was i remember it was like 8 p.m i saw it, one of my classmates and he was like ah, what are you doing in school i was like oh, nothing nothing i just tried to play it cool so i entered school i went to the board and to my greatest shock I looked, I went through the whole result. I had the lowest score. I mean, I'm talking CA. My CA was 11. I had 11 over. I think our CA is um, is, rated, is ranked over 30 or something. So I had 11 over 30. In um, When it came to the exam, I had 11 over 70. Like, it was, I failed woofy. I was the lowest. Like, I, didn't, I don't think any of the carryovers that, any of the Fs that were there were, could match up to the F I had. My F was bad. It was that bad. Staying at the board there, I cried. Like, I cried. I went back home. I called my loved ones. I called everybody. I told I told my sister what happened. And they, they tried their best to console me, you know. So, um, after that, you know, the next thing is to, you know, do the right thing. Take your carryover course. Okay, that's, that is what I advise my friends that I know have had carryovers in the past. I'm like don't sit around crying so it was time for me to actually practice what i preach don't sit around crying get ready take it again make sure you do well the main thing is to do well at it and it won't affect your gp okay so yeah i and that was what i did i was in my final year so in my final year first semester i was supposed to take um that course i failed that mr x's course i failed in my third year so um the first day i attended the class i and a lot of and other of my some other classmates that also failed the course we attended the lecture together the very first lecture he had taking our juniors that's the people in third year we attended the very first lecture and after the lecture we were advised to you know go and meet him introduce ourselves since we are carryover students you know let him know our purpose let him know that we are serious this time around you know just form serious students so he does he knows that we are interested in passing this course and that was what we did but you know how i knew that this man had it he had it in for me was immediately i we were coming out of the lecture room and he was like by his car people all students were rushing him sadi sada sada he said me and he was like sandra this was the tone he used i would never forget he was like sandra you it seems like you want to sleep in this school or something something silly or something stupid like that i was like it seems like i want to sleep in this school why, why would i want to spend the rest of my life in this school I, where is this coming from do you understand i was i was like okay no no sir i don't want to sleep in this school he said okay you know what see me at my office 
my mind was really beaten i was really scared so i went to his office then i called my friend i told him see what this lecturer said he said okay just go go and find out what he wants and what he's why he's looking for you but always try to so one advice i would give anybody in this situation okay because what i did what i did in this situation was to always play the fool and always play it innocent like i don't know what you're talking about sir i don't know what you're talking about he's asking me you this funky i'm like sir no i don't know what you're talking about you know play it innocent okay don't play at their games because if you think you can start playing all you know bad bad b can giving bad b kind of vibes they will treat you like that okay so that was what i did i went to his office and i came from the angle of okay i know he always sold like as usual he was selling textbooks again and we that carried over we have the textbooks but we were still going to buy so i came with that angle i was like oh sir let me I will make sure that this time around we are serious. We want to pass. Ah, we, we didn't. I, I wish we we did better the last time. We were being on serious. Now we are ready to pass your course. Please, sir, how do we get the textbooks? Can you, you know? I was talking money because if there's one thing people love more than harassing people for sex is money. So I was using. I came with that angle. I said, okay, please let me collect the money. Let's get let's get these books. He said, okay, okay. And then from there he started calling me. Let me have your number. That was how he got my number. So, um, towards the end, exams were approaching, okay? We were approaching exams. I was so scared. I was reading, 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 attending night classes for this particular course. I was like, nah, I'm going to this course. No, I will kill it. So, um, yeah. So, he, towards that, I, I gathered the money that we had already, you know, people had paid for, for the, for the textbook and then i called him and i was like sir i have i have this amount of money please we want to get the textbook and then he said okay meet me at my office so in my head i was like okay i'm meeting mr x at his office in school and then he called me he called me back and said no meet me at my office outside school he gave me the address that was when i knew oh my god i was in for it like what is this outside school wahala i don't want this so the one thing i also did was this is also an advice to anybody going through this through this part this same situation tell people about it you don't have to go through this alone you are not alone if you have your loved ones around you tell people people coming around to you know come up with ideas on the best way to tackle this issue would go a long way and that was what i did i'm so grateful i'm so thankful i told my mom because before i went to his office to see him i called my mom i said mommy this like this course i failed see what happened and then this man is telling me to come to his office my mom said okay give me his name because my mom is a spiritual kind of person like she is my spiritual backbone so she told me okay give me his name and then i did that i wrote it i wrote down his name i sent it to her as a text message and i told her mommy this is his name the next day she called me she said nay i've prayed about this case okay and immediately she was praying she told me that when she was praying she felt this you know this chill her spine was cold, you know, you know, mothers and how they can be. I was, I, I thought she was being dramatic, but that was what she told me. But she told me that she has prayed about it. Okay, then, yeah, the next day I went to the office. I went to his office. I think he told me to come around three or four. I was at his office by four. He came around, I think, to seven. Yeah, it was getting late. And I was like, can we still have this meeting? Anyways, it's just to give him his money and go. So he finally came. He finally arrived. And he told me, okay, let's go into the office. I got into his office. And immediately I got into his office. The first thing he did was to say, let me have your phone. Switch off your phone. I was, my mind was like, oh my God, what's going to happen? You know, so he, he knows very, very well what he was doing. He doesn't want, of course, he doesn't want me to record anything. He doesn't want anything on him. So he took my phone. He made sure I switched off my phone. And I did, I switched off my phone. And then the conversations began okay you know asking me silly nasty questions that you would not expect that's not what you're expecting your lecturer to ask you like when did you lose your virginity oh you must have been very sweet Na nasty things and i was like all the while i was like ah, sir sir no no i was trying to play it cool but in my head i knew that if this was to happen if he wasn't my lecturer and this was happening like for like a random person in the streets is talking to me like this i would I will lose my cool. I, <laughs> I don't say I will punch, but I would punch you. I would make sure you know that I'm not finding this funny. But I just I held myself like I. It took me. It took everything I had in me to hold down myself. I controlled myself, and um, 
he now continued he said do you have a boyfriend i said yes i do have a boyfriend and then he told me okay so i said sir in fact he's not just my boyfriend that was the excuse i had planned with my friends to say that's why i say tell your friends so i told him i said i had the excuse i was giving was i have a boyfriend and we're actually serious you know this relationship is serious my parents are aware about it aware of the relationship and he's coming to marry me immediately after school we've done the introductions everything is settled and he was like oh i'm sure this is not the first time he's hearing that kind of excuse so he said okay um where is he from at that moment you know when i'm i'm not a I'm not the best liar. I don't even know how to lie perfectly. But at that moment, I just remembered my friend that is from Osuka. My best, my very good friend from Osuka then. And I was like, okay, he's from Osuka. He's from Opi in Osuka. And he was like, Opi in Osuka? You, you from Anambra, you want to marry an Osuka man? I don't think so. Uh -uh. Let me speak to your mother. You guys. He spoke to my mother. I was thinking that was a joke, but he was like, let me speak to your mother. I was like, my mother i said okay i called my mother he watched me dial mommy on the phone past seven you are with somebody's daughter you are a lecturer i dialed my mom's number and i put it on speaker he said ah mama sandra ada armstrong to you guys don't call me sandra call me ada armstrong so he said mama sandra your daughter is here with me and she's telling me that she wants she's getting married to a man from nsuka is this what you put once for her? And my mother, God bless that woman. God bless that woman. I have not told her about any relationship. She does not know about any relationship. She said, uh -uh. You know, we as her mother, we are after her happiness. What we want is her happiness. If she has chosen to marry somebody from Nsuka, who are we to stop her? Ah, I was like, Ah, oh, mommy. Because what if he had said, my mother had said, Nsuka, what are you? My daughter doesn't. It would have been over for me. So immediately he heard my mom confirm that. I don't know whether it's my mom's voice. I don't know whether it's God. All I can say is this is this was God at work. I prayed about this thing. So he ended the call. He said, Okay, if that's what you want. He was still talking about before then he was talking about how he would get me this, get me that, blah blah blah. And I was like, son, I already told that I have somebody. I wish I could say yes, but I have somebody that wants to marry me, and all this is just he said oh so when he confirmed that for my mother he was like okay okay it seems like you're a good girl it seems like you're a trust yeah yeah you're, you're a truthful girl and that was i was like god that was when i knew like god actually works miracles because ha i knew i was in deep shit i was i was in need not i was in need so yeah from there that was basically how like i escaped that situation and we started talking we went back to money give me my money take your textbooks that was that was how god saved me from that situation like i don't even know what would have happened if i did not tell the people i told them my loved ones my friends my mom if i had not prayed about it so if you do find yourself in similar situation just know that you're not alone make sure you tell people because someone might suggest something that would you know bring you out of that situation and you don't know who you're going to tell like that would also you know profile or be a source of you know rescue you from that situation so make sure you don't go through any sexual harassment issue alone let your loved ones let your friends know genuine loved ones and friends let them know i took that exam even though the exam was oh my god it was bloody but because of that relationship that we now had you know he was now seeing me as oh this mommy's girl that is getting married you know i passed i aced that exam to the glory of god i don't know how to like i aced that exam i passed and i came out i'm i'm here now i'm a graduate so yeah if you're in school and this is what's happening to you just know that you're not alone calm down make sure you don't you don't give in because that was something i was very certain of amongst everything that was happening that was happening at that point i was setting a hundred and one percent setting that i was not going to give in no matter what when i carry over that course 10 times i'm not i am not sleeping with nobody's father anyways that is my little sexual harassment experience please let me know in the comment section if you have ever been through something like this similar issues like this you don't know we can be motivating one or two persons out there okay 
so yeah we've come to the end of this video if you did enjoy this video as usual please give me a big thumbs up okay let me know you show your support by giving me a big thumbs up share this video let people know to follow ada armstrong until next time bye